Welcome. Welcome back, YouTube. It's Gary with Become the Music, continuing my dive into the I Mother Earth debut album called Dig, released August 10th, 1993. And, uh, you know, incredible band. I'm actually seeing them in a few months. They're touring with another great Canadian band called The Tea Party. And uh, really looking forward to I Mother Earth. It's always a great time live. They're really, really fun. Cut loose, dance for a couple hours. Yeah, really good stuff. Uh, so this song was a huge uh, single in Canada. Still get some airplay. Uh, Rain Will Fall. This song is called Rain Will Fall. I Mother Earth. Let's hit it. Edwin before he cut his hair. You see what I mean by the hippie thing? The drummer's got dreadlocks. Not that that really matters or whatever. Listen to that bass. Just want to point out that uh, they had lost their bass player just prior to recording this debut album. And so Jag Tanner, the guitar player, actually played all the bass parts on this record. What a chorus. What a voice. going to stop and back this up you can listen to a guitar layer that uh, Jag Tana adds so I'm going to back up before the chorus here so guitar bass and drums right plus we get to hear this killer chorus again I can't sit still when these guys are playing. They're just so good, so fun. Another guitar line, right? It's just one of one of Jag Tana's uh, main skills is arranging. He's really, really good at arranging. There's a lot of sonic texture, a lot of layering. Um, in what he does. He uses a lot of colors in the studio. Four brothers make the mother. If you hadn't watched my introduction video, this band is, there's two brothers in this band, Jag Tana and Christian Tana. Jag's the guitar player, Christian is the drummer. I've seen this band play a lot of really killer jams live. You know, I mentioned in another video that they tour with a percussionist. They have a Latin percussionist, congas, shakers, the whole thing, right? And they can get into these these spaces where they just like, they drop the song structure and just go for like, you know, an 18 minute jam session and they're just getting into it and the crowd is dancing. Just, it's, it's really cool, really cool. I haven't seen this video in years. This is really fun. how funky that guitar is. I'm gonna back this up. A couple things I want to point out. So really cool funky guitar part um, and it gets into some really nice Latin work on like percussion stuff you can come you can hear coming up in this break and this is where live they would take off into a jam, right?
I think this guitar part he's he's picking with his fingers. He's doing a bit of a slap technique. There's another song that he does a lot of extensive, like you know how a bass player does does funk slap slapping and popping. He does that on guitar, and he does a little bit of that right here with this with the wah pedal behind it. Now percussion. So good. Who sounds like this? Nobody sounds like this band, you know? I said in, in I did an introduction video to this band. If you want to go and watch that, I'll drop a link here. Um, the funk of the Chili Peppers, the psychedelic stuff of Jane's Addiction, and the Latin groove of Santana, but heavy. Like, how can you not like that, man? These guys are so good. I wish they were still releasing music. At least they're still touring. They get together once a year, once every couple of years, and they do some gigs. So looking, let's say, looking forward to seeing them in a couple of months here. It's going to be amazing. I saw them a couple of years ago. So fun. Probably about 10 times I've seen these guys. I just want to back that up at the beginning of this part. Yeah, you can see him snapping with his fingers there on the guitar, right? So he's mim mimicking what he does live. Listen to this subtle, good, clean guitar part. I'm going to back this up. So right, right behind these spoken word vocals. So he's doing the funk slap stuff on the guitar. There's percussion, drums, and bass going on as well. And then he starts playing this really cool clean guitar part behind the spoken word stuff right that's the kind of ideas that he has and he layers their music with a lot of really like interesting dense texture very very talented guy one of my personal favorite guitar players ever he's really good and very it's too bad you know like he's very unknown it's it's really too bad because He's, he's brilliant. He really is brilliant. You know, he's got a different take on things than just let's play riffs and then do a solo. He's like an all around textural player. Very, very good stuff, but heavy, you know, interesting. All that stuff there. keyboard layering coming in here you can hear that Latin percussion the heavy bass groove yeah listen to that guitar sound back this up Listen to his lead tone. It's just so sweet. It's just a beautiful guitar sound. It's like, it's dirty, but very, very clear and just full of texture and, and, and nuance and soul and warmth. And it's, it's juicy. It's a, just a beautiful guitar sound. I think he's using nailer amps for all us guitar nerds out there. He also used Buddha ampli amplification for a while. By the way, interesting story. I couldn't find the reference online, but I read someplace years ago that when they were recording the first album, because they recorded part of it in Hollywood, by the way, produced by Mike Klink, who did Megadeth's Rust in Peace and um, Appetite for Destruction and a whole bunch of really up there, heavy, heavy releases, right? Um, when they were recording in Hollywood, he was looking for a guitar and he got his guitar from Edward Van Halen. There's a story about that, but I couldn't find it before I did the shot this episode tonight. But uh, there's some connection with him and Eddie Van Halen, which with regarding with with his guitar, which is really cool. So, listen to his lead guitar playing when it comes in. It's so tasty. Volume swells.
killer phrasing. So I've played two of the more heavier songs off this album so far. Um, they actually do, a, most of their stuff is kind of in this realm, but they also do a lot of kind of different stuff, a little, little more commercial oriented and some more darker psychedelic stuff. And their last album was actually quite prog. It was quite, quite a prog album. Love this drummer too, just great groove. So good, just so, so good. I love that band so much. I haven't mentioned the bass player, Bruce Gordon. Um, he's been in, our, in and out of the band. He's not with them right now. I think he does tour with them when they do tour though. Um, but you know, they've, they've kind of had a bit of a revolving door thing with bass players. So the core members now are Jag Tana on guitar, Christian Tana on drums, and Edwin goes, just goes by the one name Edwin on vocals. And they had another singer named Brian Byrne for their last two albums. He's no longer with them. He went to do other things. So, I'm Mother Earth with Rain Will Fall off the incredible debut album, Dig. Uh, big 90s band in Canada. Big, big band up here. You know, unfortunately never made the States that, that much, but uh, that's life, right? So, I'm going to do one more track from this album, and I hope you'll join me for that. So, thanks a lot for watching. See you next time. <laughs>